The Picatrix, also known as the Gayat al-Hakim, is a medieval Arabic book of astrological magic believed to have been written in the 10th or 11th century. Its contents encompass a wide array of esoteric knowledge, including astrology, alchemy, talismanic magic, and the summoning of spirits. Containing a synthesis of ancient Greek, Persian, and Indian magical traditions, the Picatrix offers a comprehensive guide to harnessing the powers of the cosmos to achieve one's desires. Book One, Chapter One. You should know, my dearest brother, that the best and most noble gift that God has given to humanity in this world is knowledge. By knowledge, we become acquainted with ancient things and the causes of everything in the world, and understand how one thing corresponds to another. Through this understanding, we can know everything that is and why it is, and why one thing is elevated above another in due order. We learn where the root and beginning of all things in this world exist, that thing by which all things are dissolved, and through which everything new and old is made known. For this is truly the first, and it lacks nothing, nor does it need anything else except itself. It is the cause of all other things, and does not receive its qualities from another. It is not a material body, nor is it composed of material bodies, nor is it mixed with anything other than itself, but rather is all things in itself. Therefore, it may not be called anything except the One. Properly speaking, it is the sole truth and unique unity, and from it, anything united receives its unity. It is also the primal truth and does not receive its truth from another. Rather, everything receives truth from it. Everything apart from it is imperfect, while it alone is perfect. There is no perfect truth or unity apart from it, but it alone can be rightly called perfect unity and truth. All things are under it and receive from it truth and unity, generation and corruption, as it is the cause of these things. Because of this, it may be known which part of anything receives its properties from it and how this occurs and why. For the one alone comprehends the order and relation of the generations and corruptions of all created things, and which of them are first, which are of a middle station, and which are last. The last are the cause of their own corruption, and are not the cause of generation in any other thing. The middle have the cause of corruption in them, and are the cause of corruption in all things that exist beneath them. The first is the cause of the generation and corruption of all other things that exist beneath them, and nothing is higher or more perfect than it, so as to be the cause of its generations and corruptions. Nor is anything other than the One capable of perfect knowledge of the order of created things, and how and why the last is raised up by similarity, step by step, until it corresponds to the first and descends again from the first in due order until it corresponds with the last. For the first alone is the perfect philosophy and the knowledge of truth. You should know that knowledge is a perfect and noble thing, and you ought every day to study God, that is, to study His commandments and His goodness, because from Him knowledge, perception, and goodness proceed and his spirit is a noble and exalted radiance. Whoever intends to study him ought to despise the things of this world which have an end and in which no stability exists. From him, as from a higher world, the human spirit descends and it ought to desire to return to the place whence it came and where its root abides. There indeed, it has the capacity to know what the world is and what its powers are, and in what manner it was made by its creator. The source of this knowledge is true wisdom. You should likewise know that God is indeed the shaper and creator of the whole world and everything that exists in it, and that this world and everything in it were created from on high. 
Yet the mind of God is too deep and potent to be comprehended, and what little can be comprehended of it can be grasped only through study and knowledge. This is the greatest gift that God gave to humanity that they might seek to know and understand. To study, therefore, is to serve God. Note also that knowledge has three properties. The first is that it always gains and never diminishes. The second, that it fosters virtuous habits. And the third, that it does not increase unless the knower wills it and delights in it and seeks after it with reason and will. Therefore, you should know that the secrets we intend to reveal in this book of ours cannot be won unless you obtain knowledge first. Whoever desires to know ought to acquire a passion for the sciences and thoroughly scrutinize their rules. For it is ordained that these secrets cannot be won except through wisdom and study in the sciences. In these secrets, however, is a great purity with which you will be able to help many. Chapter 2. What magic is and what its properties are. You should know that this science is named magic. We call magic whatever is done by man, by which sense and spirit follow by its action in all their parts, or by which marvelous things are done so that the senses are led by them, contemplating and marveling. Magic is difficult to understand because it uses connections hidden from our senses and sight. This is because these connections are divine powers placed before things to lure them upwards, as said before, and this science is too deep and strong for the intellect. Part of this science is practical because it operates on spirit by spirit, and this is done by making things similar that are not so in essence. The composition of images does this with spirits and bodies, while the composition of alchemy does this with bodies and bodies. More generally, we use the word magic for all things hidden from the senses, and those things that most people do not know how to do, nor whence their causes arise. By sages, magical images are called talismans, which may be translated violators, because whoever makes an image does so by violence and makes it by conquering the substance of which it is made. To work victoriously, he makes it with mathematical proportions and influences and uses celestial writing. These images are made from their proper substances in order that they might receive the aforementioned influence, and this is done at appropriate times. By suffumigation, they are strengthened, and spirits are drawn into these images. Know then that this is similar to the elixir, which conquers bodies and by transmutation changes them to other, purer bodies. Magical images similarly work in such a way that they accomplish all things through violence. Poisons work in a similar way when they course through a body and change it, reducing it to its nature, because one body is changed into another by the power of the compositions that exist in it. You should know also that the power of purification that is called the elixir is made from earth, air, fire, and water. These four powers become one in it, reduced to a common property in nature, because when it enters and penetrates a body, it spreads through all its parts so that the body might better be altered and more readily obey and be transmuted under the elixir's power. Similarly also, the elixir in alchemy works by quickly converting a body from one nature into another, nobler one, first overwhelming its harsh and hissing spirit and removing its qualities and its dregs. This is the secret of the elixir according to the sages of old. The word elixir may be translated fortitude because it shatters other fortitudes by conquering them and transmutes them from one property to another until it reduces them to its own. The elixir cannot be made except by compounding animals, plants, woods, and minerals into one, as they imply who say that the elixir is made in the same way as the world, since the world is compounded out of all the things we have named. 
Similarly, the elixir ought to be compounded out of similar things so that every part of it is joined together and enters into every other part so that the woods are not able to remain by themselves nor are other vegetable or animal things able to remain separate from vegetables and similarly minerals desire coction and the power of fire together with moisture and the power of air and then are satisfied. We have found all this in a book called the Book of Ordinances. For now, however, we return to our subject. Magic is divided into two parts, that is, theoretical and practical. The theoretical part is knowledge of the places of the fixed stars, because from these are composed the celestial figures and forms of the heavens, and of how their rays project into the planets that move of themselves and of understanding figures of the heavens when they wish to make them. In this is included all that the sages of old have said about the elections of hours and times to work with images. You should know that those who have equaled the ancients in making images know that the virtue of images consists wholly in the election of hours and times of the proper constellations and in appropriate substances from which the images are made. Words also form a part of magic, because words themselves have magical virtues. Plato says the same thing, that just as a friend can become an enemy through wicked and insulting words, good and friendly words can turn an enemy into a friend. By this, it is clear that words have magical power in them. The greatest strength is achieved when several strengths are joined together to overcome, and this is the perfect virtue in magic. This comprises the theoretical part. The practical part, in turn, is the combination of the three natures with the virtue infused by the fixed stars. This is what the sages call virtue, but they do not know how or in what manner this virtue comes to be imparted. When things that have such virtues are brought together at the same time, they have need of elemental heat. This is done by suffumigation, which helps to complete the incomplete virtue. Similarly, it ought to have natural heat, that is, by digestion. These two cannot be complete, nor are they able to function without the presence of human and animal spirit. You should know also that magic is gained by actions and works in one way, and more subtly, in another. That which is gained by actions and works is gained from the magistry that is performed by the sage in the world of the circle of the moon and the sage who is mentioned in the Nabataean agriculture, as it says in that book, in the place where it says that you ought to accept the four birds. And the part that is gained subtly is from works performed by that sage who works in the motion of the sphere of Saturn, and also the sage who works in the motion of the sphere of Venus. And these two sages also are spoken of in the aforesaid book. The ancient Greek sages used to work in subtle ways to change appearances and to make those things appear to be so which were not. They named the science of images Yetelegehus, which is translated the attraction of celestial spirits. And this name is applied to every part of magic. No one is able to attain this science except by astrology, nor are they able to proceed beyond the study of astrology unless at least they know the figures that exist in the eighth sphere and their motion, as well as that of the other spheres, and the division of the 12 signs of the zodiac with their degrees and their natures and the qualities of each sign and their correspondences in this world, and the divisions of the planets in these twelve signs, and the movement of the zodiac, and when other things are said to be conjunct with them, and the nature of the seven planets, and the head and tail of the dragon, and their places in the heavens, and their correspondences among the things of this world, and how to predict their risings and settings, and which ones rise and set before others, and their radical significations. These are the fundamentals of astrology and knowing which of the seven planets rules a figure 
and understanding the order in which they rule and how to extract the planetary parts from the zodiac. These are the things without which it is impossible for anyone to achieve mastery of this science and all of it may be found in books of astrology. This is what the first sage says who is described in the aforesaid Nabataean agriculture when he says, they have raised me above the seven heavens. He means by this, anyone who knows all the motions of the heavens and their qualities by the power of the understanding and the senses. This is likewise what God meant when he said, let us exalt him on high. He means by this, let us give to him senses and intellect so that he might be able to penetrate the highest of sciences.